Hello, friends. Welcome. I am so glad to have you here. And all to everybody who's watching the replay, hello. I am so excited to start this new year off. I am so happy to say goodbye to 2023, to be honest with you. Like, goodbye. Excited for 2024. Now, this is for any woman, any mom in who works, works outside the home, works in the home, who's a stay-at-home mom. Work is not just getting paid. Like, you've got things to do. We all have things to do. And it's hard to balance it all. And let me tell you right now, I am not coming at this as an expert. <laughs> not in the least. I am a freaking hot mess. Like, bananas. But I have learned some things. And I have been trying to put some things into place. And I want to hear from you, your tips in these areas as well. So because life is busy and I know we can use a little bit of help. Now, I know with January, we're like super excited to get going in like new schedules and like getting a planner or getting a new calendar and just like working out new routines and things like that. And I know if, if it, things don't happen, we can get burnt out. So we're going to also talk about burnout because it's real. And boy, have I experienced burnout. 2023 was bananas. So, all right, let's jump into this. Um, in fact, in the chat and on replay, same thing. I want you to write, like, if you let me know what, what your situation is. Um, let's do like one. If you, well, just do one as your you work. That could be inside the home or outside the home. Two, you're a stay-at-home mom. If you have a job, it still counts as one, number one. Does that make sense? And three, you're retired because my audience ranges. We've got a great range here. So um, hi, Karma. So we've got a good range. So one, if you work in or outside the home. Two, stay-at-home mom or you stay at home um, if you're not a mom like a housewife, uh, and three, if you are retired, I would love to know. Hello, Mandy. Um, I just want, would love to get a sense on this. And I know there's ways of doing polls on lives in one day. I'm going to figure this out. So, okay. So now like my friend Mandy is on right now, Mandy in the making. And my friend Steph is on. They know I am a mess. They've seen it. They have seen it. Um, I have ADHD, just so you know. And so even with medication, it is hard to stay focused because I want to do all the things. My to-do list is long, you know, like everybody else's. And I want to do all the things. And when is it time when mom is on? Like my mom apron is on, right? I got my mom apron on. Well, I don't have little itty bitties anymore. I have older children. I have four children. Two are outside the home now and we have two in and they're teenagers, 16 and 13. 13. She's 13. Holy cow. Um, and so they could take care of themselves. You know, it's it's easy. But I noticed that I feel like I'm a little more frazzled and even busier if that makes sense oh my gosh so when so i have to and we all do when does the mom apron go on when does the, the work woman go on when does the volunteer apron go on um when does the wife apron go on like how i'm exhausted and we don't want to be like two ships in the night so but we kind of wear all the aprons at the same time, but there is a time and dedicated place for each one, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm not a fan of the word balance. I'm really not. Um, it just means like we need to just focus on the areas of our life that that moment that are happening to you in that moment. I did, um, I'll leave a link to the video. Uh, I did a seminar, like a meet and greet 
thing in Massachusetts years ago with you guys. And I did share the video, I believe, on what the subject was. And it was a pie wheel. So look at a, a pie wheel, okay? And each piece of the pie could be all even, right? Well, there are stages in our life when some pieces of that pie have to be a little bit bigger and some smaller because things are going on in our business, in our life that it needs a little more focus. So we need to like shrink our priorities and to do's in some areas a little bit smaller. So, um, and, and this is by season, this could be by year. So we can't always be perfect in every aspect of our life, right? It's hard. We're being like pulled like this. We have to take it by moments and by seasons. So uh, in 2023, I as you notice, didn't post as much on YouTube. I, that's not my, that wasn't my attention and that wasn't my goal, but my body and my mental health was like, girl, this train is going too fast. We need to slow it down. And I wanted to keep chugging fast. And it was like this season right now, we need to slow it down. I didn't want it to. But my body and my mental health was like, well, that's just too dang bad. <laughs> so that's why we need self-care. We need room for our like mental health, right? So um, so everything is going to look different too. So now I know everyone jumps on to everyone's like different programs or cleaning schedules. And like, especially with cleaning, there's what the fly lady, who else is there? Leave them in the comments. There's um, uh. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. I see her bandana on her head. Clean mama. Um, there's all these different routines that were like, yeah, I'm going to jump right in, right? Um, I had to take things on my mood and um, where I was at at that time in that season. So I don't cram my morning routine like I used to. Okay. I don't. I know. And I have gotten a good feel for my body um, that there's certain windows of the day that I have to be the most productive and that some things can wait until that block is over. Um, yes, you can have, we're going to talk about block scheduling. Yes, you could say um, my morning routine is from like when I wake up until 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or you know, and then I work from, especially if you work in the home between these times, and then I have my dinner time block. Well, there's moments where I have to kind of switch things because of how I'm feeling in that moment. And with ADHD, I, if I am feeling like, okay, for instance, uh, I do zone cleaning and I have lots of videos here on YouTube. I'll link them after this on zone cleaning. I better make a note of that. Cause you know, I have ADHD and I'll squirrel. Um, that I like to follow the fly ladies on cleaning. And in fact, I put it in my planner. Now you don't have to do it like she does because I learned, uh, I wanted to quit. You have to do what feels good for you. Not just like what everyone else in the pond is doing. If that's making sense, right? Do it your way. So when I created the she's in her apron planner, I was like, we are not, I'm not telling you what to do in the zone cleaning part. I was like, I'm not telling you what to do. I just gave you like a zone one, a zone two through five, and then space to create your own. Okay. And I was like, okay, I took the fly lady method and I just put entrance and I just put things here and then a space for you to fill out. Zone two is the kitchen. Zone three is bath and laundry. Zone four is bedrooms and zone five is living rooms. Do what you want with that. You could do zones. You can be like, you know what? This week or today, I want to focus on zone two in the kitchen. The I want to focus on the appliances. I I have to do it this way because there's like this little kid rebellion that I have. Anybody else like have this little kid rebellion? Uh, in the comments, leave the number four where it's like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Because if you tell me what to do, I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. Um, and, and so even for me in my routines, I'm like, the fly lady is telling me that this week 
We're in zone four in the bedrooms, but I am not feeling that. I don't want to do that. I am feeling pushed to be in my kitchen and scrubbing out the refrigerator and scrubbing out the stove. That's where my energy wants to go. That's where I'm feeling it. And guess what? When I ignore the person over here telling me what to do and I go off of how I am feeling, guess what gets done? The stove gets cleaned out and the refrigerator cl gets cleaned out. So I will just put in my planner, like I'll say, all right, for next week, I, I want to do zone two, the kitchen, but that week can come. And I'm like, mm, no, no, this week, I really feel like being in the bedroom and I am going to declutter my clothes. I'm going to de dust, you know, and guess what happens? It gets done. So sometimes you have to go off of how you feel, but the job's going to get done. Does that make sense? Because I think sometimes when we try to balance everything and, and we start the new year and we, we're like wanting to do all these schedules and we're going to, you know, stick to everything and check up every box, life happens. And then you get discouraged that it didn't happen. And so I hope I'm making sense to you guys. Once I realize that I, when it comes to things like that in the home, I have to go off of how I feel. Now, when it comes to the work side, the business side of things, there's things that I have to do. There's things I should do. And then there's things I want to do. Now, sometimes when it comes to work, the things that we want to do, and if we focus too much on, are not the things that are going to um, get you far in work, that aren't really going to get the job done. It's kind of like uh, procrastinating in a, in a way where do you notice when you're supposed to do something and you just don't feel like doing it? You kind of, you procrastinate and all of a sudden you're supposed to do this project over here, but I'm going to go over here and do this project and I'm so busy doing it. And you're like, I'm being so accomplished, but the task that you were supposed to do is still sitting there waiting. Put a five in the comments if you've experienced this because this is me. Okay. There are, there are times when I need to be working on the cookbook, but I'm over here doing something else. And this is why the cookbook is not done. Okay. I have, I have people on my butt. I have people holding me accountable. Okay. Mandy's one of them. Kristen Hill from Six Sisters, Tara from Living on a Dime, that woman will tell you what to do, how to do it. Oh, she's a good accountability partner, let me tell you. So notice where you're putting your focus and why, why are you putting so much focus over here when you need to be over here? Well, for me, I, 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 I've done a lot of reflecting in 2023, you guys. Oh my gosh. And I go to therapy and I think everyone should do a form of therapy. Uh, I think the world would be a much better place if everybody was in therapy. And it was why, what stops you from doing that thing? What is it? There's something subconscious that is stopping you. Could it be rejection? Could it be, I don't want to fail? I, you know, so you got to look at it and go, why am I procrastinating with that? You know, um, so it, it's a lot of deep thinking in 2023, friends, lots. Okay, so, do, so like I said, not everything needs to be equal in all areas. Um, and changing and trying new routines and habits, it's not going to take place overnight. Like there's things, okay, if you watched uh, Monday's video, I talked about there's things that I set up into routines, the start of she's in her apron that are now like clockwork. It's like getting up and going to the bathroom in the morning. Th these things that I do, they're, I don't even have to think about it. Just I just naturally do them in my routine. So now I just focus like, okay, this week, what is it that I, or this month, 
that I really want to focus on and just nail, try to nail every day, you know? Um, so that way those things in my routine become habits. Okay. So, um, and I'm going to get to your comments and then we'll do questions. So keep typing away. I see them. I see you. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, so, so identify some of the main areas in your life. Okay. So you have your spirituality, okay, your faith. Um, then you have your health and fitness. Then you have friends and family, uh, your home environment, your finances, your career, and uh, your hobbies, the things that you love to do, right? Um, let me tell you, some of my hobbies have gone to the wayside because I have made other pieces of my pie or of the wheel much bigger. And through, you know, my therapy, it was like, you got to bring back in the things that you love to do. I was just talking to, the other day to my friend Karina. And I'm like, what have you been doing? And she said, I have been reading books. And I'm like, what? I want to read a book. I listen to books. I have Audible and I listen. But for me to like sit and read, I haven't done that, you guys. Like finish a book from start to cover, years. Now, when we go on vacation and stuff, I bring a book and I'll read a little, but it's like little, you know, I want to read a book. I want to be able to finish a book. Uh, during the holidays, I bought a cross stitch. So I've been trying to cross stitch more. Um, and guess what came in at Amazon? I bought a puzzle. Now Walmart has these puzzles. They're um they're from Rose Art. It's the like blast in the past editions, I guess. Look at this. Isn't that adorable? Oh my gosh. So I went to Walmart yesterday and they I went to a different Walmart during the holidays and they had this one, but my Walmart didn't have this one. So I ordered it off of Amazon. It was like eight dollars. Look how stinking cute that is. I can't wait to get into that, which means I have to, even in my planner, schedule that in and force myself to stop doing the things that can wait. Now, it is hard when you work from home, okay? And anybody that works from home and you have to balance life and work at the same time because you can't just like clock in and then clock out. I mean, you can, but like, you're surrounded. Like I always tell Derek, I'm like, I think when our next home, she's in her apron needs its own studio. I need like one of those big tough sheds, like turned into like a mini kitchen and pantry because I want to be able to walk away from she's in her apron when I'm done and close the door and like clock out. It is so hard balancing the two because the kids are like, can we eat that? I'm like, no, I still have to take pictures of it. Or I haven't filmed the ending of that yet. Or, and you know, they're always like, can we touch this? Can we have this? It's quite funny. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Derek. He's like, I almost beat into it. Um, and so I'm like, I want a studio that I could just like shut the door but I can't, that's not my reality. So I, I have to learn to when to clock out. And for somebody with ADHD, that is hard. That is so, so hard. Um, the she's in her apron, she shed studio. <laughs> I love that. Yes. I, I, I want that. I want that so, so bad. In fact, I was talking to uh, my friend Jordan and I was like, this is what I want in our next home. So either we're looking for a home that has like a side off mother-in-law situation or we're we're building this because I want to be able to walk away and shut the door and not have my work life melt into my home life. So that's a goal. That's that would be freaking fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah, separate workspace would be a dream. Jennifer knows. Jennifer's got an amazing YouTube channel. And yeah, you have all your stuff for all your 
your lunches and things that you make, all those, like all your equipment, your lighting, all your dishware. I mean, like, it's a thing. I have a designated cheese and apron cabinet, keeping all that separate. You know, um, it's hard when I, I, like I always say to like, Derek, I'm like, wouldn't it be nice, like a nine to five job? Like if I worked from home, having a different job than what I do as a content creator, having that office that I could just shut the door. This is my office guys. And it's hard. I have to balance the time. When is this workspace? When is this like open for home? Do you know what I mean? So this is where I sat down the end of the year and really mapped out how am I going to balance my work life and my my home life? Um, because she's in her apron. It, it used to be a hobby. And now it's this amazing job. I, it's a job. And it's turned into this brand. And I'm like, this is insane. This is wonderful. And I hate complaining. Like, I hate when I'm like, I should not be complaining about this. Like, you know, but it's still work. It still is balance. And sometimes you got to shake things up, you know, sometimes you got to shake things up. Oh, Alice, thank you. I'm so proud of you. Started out years ago with you. And I look at you now. Thank you. It's a lot of work. And then there's sometimes I'm like, I'm done, but I can't walk away. I love sharing. I love sharing with you guys. And this was part of like my therapy this last year of like, what is it that I want to bring to you in 2024 that I'm in love with and that I know you'll appreciate, you know, this isn't the Kimmy show of like, look at my life. No, like, I don't want to do that. That I, I don't, I want, look, what I have tried, look what is working. Maybe it'll work for you because we're all she's in her apron. You, you, right there, you, you're she's in her apron. That, I'm going to cry. Sorry. That, right there, the apron, for me, motivates me. What motivates you? Okay. Does, if you work from home, getting out of, your slippers and actually putting on real shoes in the home. Does that get you moving? You know, what is it that motivates you? For me, it's that my superhero kit. It's my apron. That motivates me. That helps me out so, so much. So Mandy says, when you work for yourself and work from home, it never ends. It's never a clear time off. It is so hard. It really is. And I think feel like 2023, I really, I tried to have my priorities right. I tried to have a little more balanced pieces of the pie, especially with the family. Cause I'm like, I am paying way too much attention to work to the family. This, this is not good. You know, um, it's hard. It's a tough balance. So in the comments, tell me what systems, what do you do that helps that with you? So you're not feeling, because mom guilt, it's there. I mean, even if you're not a mom, you're going to have guilt somewhere in where you're spending your time and how you're balancing everything. You know, um, am I giving my fur babies enough attention? I am not giving Paige, my cute little dog, enough attention, obviously, because that dog eats my clothes. Okay. I ha We have to make sure my bedroom door is shut. She has eaten the buttons off of a new skirt that I have. She ate the buttons and zippers off a new pair of shorts. She, as I was packing for a trip, I got a new bag of TJ Maxx that I was super excited about. Um, it was one of those bags that has the space to put the handles of your suitcase in. I went into the bathroom to get all my stuff to pack it. I come back in and that zipper was completely not off. I'm like, what is going on with you, dog? She uh, chewed the buckles off a pair of my snow boots. Apparently, Paige needs some attention from me. Holy cow. Yeah, I, I, it's unreal. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see here. Miss Mountain Shasta says, which planner did you show us? Oh, this one is the, the new daily. It's called The Daily. 
Okay. And it's different from the daily that we had last year. Um, this is the semester one. So this one's January through April. You can get this one in two six month planners. It's huge guys, because what I did was, is I took the weekly planner and I'll show you really quick. The layout is a little, let me show you a blank one that I haven't written in that has my schedule in it. You don't stalk me. Okay. It doesn't say morning routine or evening routine right here. It's structured like the weekly date book was. We don't have the weekly date book anymore. So, and then, um, and then after the week, it goes straight into seven of the daily pages because I needed more. I needed more. I, there's some days where it is so busy that I needed to structure my day and really map it out and block it out. Uh, I needed to see it more. Not every day do I need to structure it so tight, but there are days where I need to. Um, and and so I just combined the two. It has all the bells and whistles as the weekly does, the holidays and everything. So that's the one. Um, yep. So let me give you an example. Let's go into, uh, let's just jump in it. To, oh, what? wait. When I was saying that you need to or want to or should, should is a tricky word. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. What's the saying? Uh, don't, come on, help me out in the comments. Don't should yourself. Kind of sounds like you're saying a bad word. Um, yeah, don't, don't should yourself, right? Do should on yourself. <laughs> Sorry if you got kids in the room, but um, there's that saying. So, so with the word, okay. So with the word should, um, where is I going with that word? See, this is ADHD. My my meds have worn off, so it's like, oh, that's great. Uh, where was it? Oh, okay. Now I remember because we want to do all the things we we feel we should be doing everything right. I should be doing this. I should have done it this way. I should 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 should. Okay, where it's like, but really, where do you need to be? So okay, if you have a piece of paper, I'm actually working on a principle, um, and I will have it up on my website tomorrow. It's almost done being made. Uh, it it's a series of questions to help you think this out. So if you have a piece of paper, write this down. Okay. This will help you kind of see where, where you want to put your priorities. Okay. So you can, you could do it opposite. Okay. You can make a, um, a, my not to do list. Okay. I, this was not my brilliant idea. I saw this somewhere on the internet a while ago and I'm like, I really like that. Okay. So what it is, is stuff that's out of my control. What is out of your control in your work life, your home life, uh, financially, in your marriage, anything. Think of an area you want to concentrate on. What is out of your control? Um, like, for example, what's out of control, um, what's out of my control is, um, my kids' school schedule, right? Um, their sports schedule. Uh, I have no control over it. These are the days practices are, okay? I have no control of that. I can't change that, right? Um, and then stuff that wastes my time. I, like, seriously, think about it. Sit and think about, like, if it's with work. What is the busy work that you do that totally wastes your time? I get sucked into a lot of stuff that wastes my time, but it's busy work. It's that little, little, little busy work. Think about it in your home. What is it that you're doing that may be too much of a busy work that is seriously a waste of your time? Uh, then number three, stuff I feel obligated to do. Okay. And then stuff that actually doesn't need to be done. Oh, wow. Think about that. What really doesn't need to be done? 
and then uh, stuff that someone else could do that you don't have to. Now, this is where I want to focus on for a minute, okay? If you are in any aspect of your job, okay, what is some things that you can pass on and not micromanage over? We do not want to be a micromanager. What can you honestly pass on that you don't have to think about and do? Take a minute. Seriously, think about it. What can you pass on? Okay. For me, I don't have to edit. I can pass that on. I have passed that on for like a year and a half. It took me years to finally pass on having someone else edit for me. And then I got a new editor at the beginning of 2023, and he did a few videos, but then I took it all on. Why? Because I'm, I'm silly. That's why. I, I thought, well, maybe I could save a buck right now. No, that didn't save me any money. It took time away from other things in my work that I do. It took away from the website. It took away from making this cookbook, okay? It took so much time away. It's not, a, like, it takes hours to edit a video. Some videos are, you know, faster than others, but... It depends on what you're doing, right? It it could take between, I've never edited a video in two hours. That's never happened to me. It could take up to eight hours per video, okay? So, and by me taking that back on my plate last year, I, I lost momentum. I lost um, just things in the business went kind of more like YouTube-wise part of the business. You know, so was it really saving me money? No. I lost money because I took that on. Guess who's back? My editor. Okay. So he's starting up next week. Yes. Now this is where you can't micromanage. You got to teach. Okay. There's a grace period of teaching someone else to do what, you know, that you could do. Um, so with that, can you have someone come in and just clean your bathrooms if you're a stay-at-home mom? Like, what's something you could take off your plate if you could afford it? Like, I, okay, so like my mother-in-law, we are in the apartment below, and she had someone come in and clean her home every two weeks, like deep cleaned her house. She's got, it's big up there. And she had someone come in deep clean. And I looked at that person, I said, look, I don't need you to come clean my whole area, but mm, will you come when you're here and I'll pay you? Will you just clean and scrub the bathroom? I took that off my plate. I gave it to someone else. Like, what can you hand off to someone else in your business, in your home? Who can you pass something else on to? Because let me tell you, if you think it's going to save you money, sometimes it doesn't when it comes to business. It doesn't. Uh, believe me. <laughs> I learned it the hard way in 2023. Okay. You can't do everything. You can't be everywhere. Because guess what help guess what happens? You start declining. Your mental health goes down. Um, you get burnout. Burnout is real, you guys. Holy cow. In fact, I just read something, was it today? About burnout. It was an interesting point of view. Um, it was burnout versus depression. Because I'm like, oh, that is so interesting because you sometimes I wonder, I'm like, am I getting depressed? Like, no, I don't feel I've had depression before. I'm like, no, this isn't depression. What is this? And so there's a, I guess, a distinct difference between burnout and depression. So they say here that burnout shares symptoms with some mental health conditions such as depression. Uh, depression symptoms also include a loss of interest in things, feelings of hopelessness, cognitive and physical symptoms, as well as thoughts of 
bye-bye. How can you tell if it's burnout versus depression? Individuals with depression experience negative feelings and thoughts about all aspects of life, not just at work. If this is how you feel, a mental health professional can help. Okay, so seeking help is important to individuals experiencing burnout may be a high risk factor for depression. So it can turn into depression, but there, but there's a difference. Like sometimes we got to hit the pump, the brakes a bit. Right. Um, what I was experiencing in 2023 was not depression. It was burnout. It was complete burnout. Um, and I noticed it was burnout because what was driving me the years before wasn't driving me because it didn't need to drive me. This is very vague and a long story, but your girl's been healing over the last bit. There's a lot of healing that's been going on. Um, that's how I lost some of the weight as well. So, um, and so I learned like, okay, I'm, I'm pushing too hard and I need to slow it down. And Sometimes we don't need to focus so much in one area. Um, so to help you with burnout, um, some suggestions I found online were discuss work problems with your company's human resource department or supervisor, explore less stressful positions or tasks within your company, take regular break, breaks, learn meditation and other mindfulness techniques, eat a healthy diet, get plenty of exercise, practice sleep, healthy sleep habits, and consider taking a vacation. Can I just tell you, the vacation that Derek and I took in July and over on Thanksgiving was much needed. Like much needed for my mental health. I had to pump the brakes. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so where it says to um, learn meditation or mindfulness techniques, one thing I was talking about today with my uh, massage therapist was I have to I have to set some alarms on my phone. I need to set some alarms for deep breathing. I'm a very shallow breather. When I'm stressed, when I'm like starting to feel a little anxious, um, I notice I'm a shallow breather. So this does not help with anxiety. So I am setting three timers on my phone for this new year where I can take three deep cleansing breaths. And it's funny because like when other people in my family feel this way, I'm like, take your deep breaths. And I don't do it. So I'm going to be setting three alarms for three deep cleansing breaths. So try that. Okay, so we, we want to avoid the burnout because we can't do all the things. So let's go into block scheduling. Do you guys, how do you do your schedule? Do you block schedule out? Now I, I'm like, oh. I have like this love hate relationship with block, block schedules. It goes back to the little Kimmy. Don't tell me what to do, but I have to block it out because if I don't want to be, if I want to be more present with the family, I have to. Um, your eyes are huge. Yes, they are. They're very huge. Um, so when I sat down to really look at my schedule this year, um, one thing that will help you is I want you to reflect on this past year. Um, what, in fact, I wrote these questions down to ask you, um, where are they? There's some questions I want you to ask yourself. Um, Where are they? It's basically like what worked, like what, what worked this year for you? What didn't work this year? You know, think back, like what was something that you put, you put in place that just failed? Like, no, it's not happening. Um, uh, when I find them again, I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you. I meant to highlight it because I didn't want to lose it. Um, yeah, when I when I find it again talking to you, I'll I'll bring it up. Um, so 
one thing that did not work for me last year was actually not having the block schedule. It was like, I said, like, yes, Tuesdays are filming days. And and in my life and what I do, everything is kind of a filming day. Um, Because when I cook dinner, I'll film it. Um, There's aspects of (laughs) this being my workspace that I'm filming even when it's in the evening when I don't want to be. So what I had to do was go, no, 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 no. We definitely need some. These are the film days. and. I am making this a priority. Yes, things are going to pop up, right? And we're going to have to look at things a little differently. But this is where we have to learn to like to put our priorities up, like to put our boundaries up, okay, with people. Like, um, no, these are my work hours. I'm not going to, um, I don't know. Maybe I don't jump on social media during these hours. Um, you know, okay, a good example is for me to remember with Derek's boundaries, Derek works from home. He has his own office upstairs. I can't be like, oh, Derek, what's the totals? Can you do this for me? And I do ask because sometimes he can do these things. But I have got to be more conscious not to be like, oh, hey, Derek, can I go do this for me because he has a schedule he you know so I I have to be very careful there um and so I have to respect that from him during those hours I kind of have to let him do his thing but knowing he's up there I'm like he's up it's hard creating those boundaries it's hard Josie says, I don't bring my phone to work. That way I'm not bothered by my phone. Ooh. Wow. That's a good one. That's a tough one. We're all addicted to our phones. Um, so, oh, I just lost my thoughts. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, So you need to, okay, what are your boundaries, especially if you work from home? When is work time? When is housewife time? You know, so I sat back and I said, okay, on Tuesdays, I am, it is a full film day. Wednesdays, film day. Now, I could say I'm shooting two different videos for Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. I wish my channel was that type of content where I can whip out more than one in a day, like a talking head video with B roll. Maybe I could, but it just doesn't happen. You still got to do stuff, right? So I said, okay, I'm, I'm making each day could be a different video, but I am giving myself permission that Wednesdays is a backup day to finish Tuesday's video. Because there's times when, depending on the video, I can have my set hours to be she's in her apron. And then at 2.30, 3 o'clock, I hit my time card and I am now mom. My goal is to be mom by 2.30. That is my goal. Uh, and there's certain days, I'm not going to give you my whole schedule, but there's certain days of the week I homeschool my daughter and there's certain days of the week she is at school. So obviously Tuesdays, she's not here. That means I need to be up, hair done, makeup on, ready to turn that camera on. If I can't get everything done by the time she gets home, Wednesday is going to have to be the backup day unless it's like a slow cooker video, right? Well, if it's a six-hour cook, I'm going to have to do it while she's here. But not every video is like that. Does that make sense? So I have to really figure out that schedule. So I know Tuesdays, Wednesdays, this is when I film. So it's hard when I have to schedule other things like doctor's appointments and hair appointments and, and other things where 
it falls on those days. Well, then I sat down with my pen and paper and my planner and I was like, okay, some things are out of my control. Sometimes Tuesdays are the only days that I can do with, I don't know, my nail lady. And I need to roll with that. Okay, but I still want to film on Tuesdays. So I look at my content. I'm like, you know what? Then on those Tuesdays that I'm not here, where it takes me out of the house, those are the days that I go to Sam's Club, to Costco, where I'm out in the stores with you. So yesterday, I had my nail appointment. So I was like, okay, going to Sam's Club, going to Costco. Needed to go grocery shopping anyway for the New Year's. So I was like, okay, this is when it's happening. So on my way up, I stopped at those destinations and then came home. It was a point where I wanted to not go into the store because for some reason, yesterday I had anxiety. I don't know where it came from. I haven't had anxiety like this in a long time, you guys. And it hit me and it was hitting me right here. And I was like, I don't want to go in. And But then I was thinking about my schedule like, Kimmy, look at your schedule. When are you going to get back here? And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then we're expecting this big snowstorm last night. We got some snow. But I'm like, well, then I can move it to Wednesday. But what if that snowstorm comes in on Wednesday? <clears throat> So I was like, all right, I'm going in. And I'm so glad I went in because as I went in and started walking around and just focusing on what I was doing, the anxiety was letting up. And I re ran into a cute viewer, Rebecca. And she said hello to me. And it was like, I got to meet somebody. And it was just like, that was awesome, you know? And I had a really great conversation with this couple in Sam's Club. And they, they were looking at me like, what are you doing? Because I'm filming. He's like, he's like, may I ask what you're doing? I'm like, I'm working. And he's like, what? And I told him what I do. And then we got into this conversation. And it was a really good conversation. And I, I loved that I had this moment with this cute old couple. And I'm like, I'm glad I went in. I'm glad I went in. And so sometimes we, you know, we got to push ourselves a little. And, but sometimes we need to know when to let it off on the brakes. So um, so with my schedule, I was like, all right. So from this window to this window is when I'm filming. And I blocked it out. Now, with me and my ADHD, sometimes I could bulldoze right through that. Right through that. Um, like, so this is how I map it out in my planner. Okay, so on this day was Wednesday, January 3rd. I had filming from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. scheduled and blocked out, which means nothing else is coming in here. I have to say no to things. That's the other tip. You've got to learn. We have got to learn to say no. And it's okay to say no. And I know we hate like wanting to hurt people's feelings or, um, but I have learned over the last couple of years I've learned to use no. And if you know anything about the anagram, I'm a number two. I'm a personality type number two. We are the helper. And a people pleaser. Yeah. It's hard. There's times where I'm like, I want to help. And I, I, I'd rather focus on your thing than my thing. So learn to say no. You're not being a, <laughs> you're not. Know your boundaries, okay? Um, so then, uh, yeah. So this is why I fell in love with the, the daily side of the planner. Like the, the daily pages is like, I, I needed this. I needed it. Um, and this is how Monday looked for me. This is how Monday worked. This was school with Shaylee. This was the morning. This was when we left the house. This was homeschool. This was work. This is filming. This was the website, the cookbook, all right here. And then at four o'clock, I needed to prep dinner. So my work window was only one to 3 p.m. That's not a long time. So 
am I going to do just busy work or am I prepping for that video that needs to get to my editor? What are the tasks and things that you're going to do that are either going to move you ahead in work, actually make you money, or are we going to piddle over here and do these things that aren't going to get you to move forward in what it is your goal is that you want to do? I get sucked into that busy work a lot. Did you say cookbook? Yes. Yes, I did. I sure did. So it's fun working on it. I just, I just got to finish the dang thing. Um, so learning to say no is a good thing. Um, and then just look at your week at the end of the week and go, how'd I do? And then go, oh. I really need to fix some things over here or over here. Now, on Monday's video, I was talking to you guys about um, sleep. My goal this year is to be in bed, physically in my bed before midnight. And I said on that video, you don't even want to know what time it is. Do you guys remember that? If you watched it, I said, you don't want to know what time it is. It was like 2.30 in the morning. That's nothing for me, Hunter. 2.30 in the morning is, that's child's play. And it's not good for my health. And um, it's not good for your heart either, you know? So I my goal is to, like, 10 o'clock, start that process of getting my butt in bed. Last night, I was in bed. I was falling asleep on the couch. Gosh, what time did I fell asleep on you? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. It was like I took a little cat nap on the nap on the couch, and then when I crawled into bed, it was like I got that second wind. Um, but I did read a book. I did read a book, and um, so that was nice. So I would say by twelve thirty, I was probably asleep. So for me, that is huge. Sleep is so important, you guys get your sleep. I've got to find ways to slow my brain down at night. Um, so one way that um, I'm trying to slow down my brain is to do something that will close the apps. That's not electronic. Um, I talked about this on Monday's video as well. Like what can we do to close all that down to like get us to go to bed? Because I don't care what schedule you've created, what routine you've created. If we're not getting our sleep, we're no good. And trust me, I know this from experience. I am no good when I don't sleep. <laughs> Cindy, I've been waiting for a cookbook for years. Oh, I, it's coming, honey. I promise. Before I retire from YouTube, there will be a cookbook. What is hard is, okay. Here's the truth, guys. What is hard is, is I'm very, like, I'm not a drawer. I can't sketch anything out. I'm a visual person. So when I am working on the cookbook in the, the sections of what I want to do, I'm like, ooh, but that could be its own cookbook. And then, or that could be its own cookbook. And so I'm like, should we format it this way? It's bad. It's so bad. So... Um, so yeah, so one of my main, main goals this year is sleep because I'm getting old. I am 46 years old. Hormones are a funny thing and I know my body's going to shift again. And if you're not sleeping and it just impacts your health, right? It, it can lead to all sorts of problems, even weight gain. And I'm like, oh boy, you know, so and so I, I I have got to get going on my sleep. I have got to make it a priority. And um, so there's nights where I I, I can do it. Um, but when I get a dopamine hit at 11 o'clock at night that I want to research um, and be like, oh, that'd be a really good video. And I, I'm like researching. And that's when. Sister Eleanor has good advice. Sister Eleanor has good advice. Eleanor. 
Eleonora, before bed, way before midnight, a bath slash shower, a relaxing book or gratitude journal, et cetera, and throw the phone far, far away. I love that. Yes. In fact, I have been showering more at night. I love that hot shower. Mr. Toodles gets mad at me because I like fry myself. Um, and, but I can't help it. <laughs> I love a hot shower. And then I'm like, he'll come in and be like, hey, it's too hot here. I'm like, fine. and then I get out of the shower and I start getting dressed and I'm like, oh my gosh, Derek, can you give me my water? I'm getting really dizzy. And he's like, I told you that shower was too hot, but I'm like, I love it. Oh my gosh. But um, one thing that my therapist was saying to me was do something that's not the electronic to unwind. So I have journal editions of my scriptures and I like to highlight things and make notes. Um, I have these beautiful scripture sets and that I got from um, a company called Line Upon Line. And and I got stickers to put in my scriptures and quotes. And, and it's like I sit and I highlight and I and I write in there. And it is just so relaxing. But I can go crazy on that too and stay up on that. Like I have to be like, no, time's up. And I just love doing that because it's it feeds my soul and it's, you know, a hobby. And it's closing down the apps and unwinding. Uh, Oh, thanks. Sorry, guys. I'm like addicted ever since I moved to Utah 26, seven years ago of having something on my lips. Um, it is R, so Revlon. Sugar Plum, 754. No, L'Oreal. L'Oreal. I'm getting old. Color something, 754 Sugar Plum. It looks, well, not on yours, but in person it, it's darker. But on here it looks peachy. I don't know. But yeah, I love L'Oreal lipstick. And I love number 800 Nude. That color I love too. So yeah, that's what that is, 754. I have to have something on my lips. It drives me crazy. All right. So, um, oh, and then with your work-life balance to keep you sane is we have to throw meal planning in there, you guys. We can't continue without that. We have to talk about meal planning because um, I have to have make-ahead meals and freezer meals. Uh, this coming week, I am making freezer meals. We are all out. And let me tell you, when I get going on something, and I don't make the things that need to be priority, priority. We are scrambling for dinner, okay? And nothing brings my mom guilt up more is when I don't have something. I don't need to be perfect every night, but dang on it, like I'm here, right? And if I haven't done a cooking video in a while, there, the food's not there, right? So meal planning and actually following through is so important. So if you work outside the home, are you doing like make ahead like casseroles or dishes that are ready, like wrapped up and ready in the refrigerator? So that way, when you get home, you can hurry and pop it in the oven or you can call someone and be like, hey, can you throw that casserole dish in the oven? Um, and then when you get home, you you finish from there. That besides the sleep, the meals are my next thing because. I can get sucked into doing something else. And it's already, like, I couldn't believe it. Uh, last week, I, I looked at the clock and I'm like, it's already four o'clock? Where did the time go? And um, I swear time is speeding up. <laughs> Anyone else feeling this? Like, it, it's unusual. So um, on days like, if I'm leaving the house, can that be a slow cooker meal? What can you do? Can you take out your slow cooker in the night before? See it on the counter so that you know. Throw something in the slow cooker. Have, if you work and you're not going to be home when it's done, get a slow cooker that when it's done with the timer that you put it on, it can go to warm. Um, because nothing will bring your mood down more. Nothing for me will make me feel like I'm unraveling when I can't feed the family. It, it drives me crazy. <clears throat> So 
I have to have make-ahead meals, especially for, and in fact, I had this conversation with my friend Heather that I bumped into at Costco yesterday. Um, <clears throat> it was how I have to get some more make-ahead meals and freezer meals in the freezer because when there's moments where I feel paralyzed and I can't feed the family, I have major guilt. What I mean by paralyzed is um, if you are somebody that has depression or anxiety or PTSD, there's moments where you feel frozen. You're super motivated to do all the things. Like, you're like, yep, I'm so motivated. I want to do that. But your body just won't let you. Uh, I've done more research with ADHD, and that is a, a symptom, like a, um, I guess a side effect, if you want to call it that, with ADHD, with the paralysis. But if I'm hit with PTSD, it's not happening. This is why with She's in Her Apron, I started years ago the freezer meals with you all because I noticed like um, with the PTSD that I had at the time, I didn't realize it was PTSD at the time. Um, that was revealed through therapy and explained a lot that I had to have freezer meals because there were moments where I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. And I wanted to feed the family. So that is why I got into make ahead meals. That is why I got into freezer meals. And this is why, like moving forward, you're going to hear me stress. If you are someone that struggles with that paralyzed feeling, have freezer meals, have make ahead meals. The best way to do it if you're just starting out is whatever meal that you are making, double or triple that batch and start getting things in your freezer ready for you for when anything hits you, okay? Like it's cold out. <laughs> you can get hit with a cold, right? But if you know and understand what I'm talking about with that paralyzed feeling, that takes one part of that guilt away is having dinner for your family when you, you've hit that wall. Yeah. Let's see, Christy says, as a mother... As a mother, how did you deal with the stage of life where they were getting licenses, driving, and moving on with life? College. I suffer with generalized anxiety disorder, and I'm struggling right now on this stage. Yes, um, if you have, if you don't have a therapist, like please reach out and talk to somebody. Uh, I've, I have, I actually have two therapists, and I've done um, EMDR, the tapping. I've done uh, the breathing techniques, um, learning to prioritize and understanding why I do the things that I do and um, why I am the way that I am um, and learning to accept some things and learning to drop some things. Um, with kids, with the driving, it's hard. Mr. Toodles does the majority of the driving. You would think with the third kid, driving, I would do better, but no, it's bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, it's hard with the change, uh, of life where they're growing up and they're leaving the home. It, it's exciting to see them grow up. It's exciting to see them do things on their own and grow into these young adults and like, but I have a hard time with like, them not being here all the time, you know? Um, so when we're all together, I am like over the moon, just over the moon. And um, it's hard. Now I understand why my dad, when us kids were leaving and he would talk to us on the phone and he, he would like weep and he would be really sad. And I'm like, dad, I didn't get it. And now I'm like, I get it. It's like you're so happy for them. and But it's like, oh, my gosh, there's this chapter that is closed, but it's opened up a whole new chapter, which is totally fun. But it's like, oh, man, it's different. It really is different. Um, Renee says, Kimmy, I definitely struggle with that feeling and with ADHD. It all hits hard when I became mom. 
I looked for advice online and that's when I found your channel. Oh, you've helped me so much. Oh, I'm so glad. I, you know, ADHD, it's funny. It's ADHD and anxiety are like best friends. <laughs> They're like, hey, uh, let's have some fun. It's not nice. And so, uh, but I've, you know, I've gotten help in that area with meds and it took years and years and years and years and years to find meds that worked with me in my body. I've tried them, different ones. They just didn't work. It would feel like I was on speed. That's a horrible feeling. You know, uh, I don't want that. And I finally found one where I felt normal, but focused and didn't feel like I was on speed. And um, talked to my doctor, you know, with the anxieties. And, and then so I take a medication that basically is an ADHD med at night. I don't know. Talk to your doctor about Quanfacine. And it's just like a milligram and it takes, I don't wake up with anxiety anymore. Talk to your doctor. Okay. YouTube. We're, you know, what is that? I am not a doctor. Talk to your doctor. Um, so I don't wake up in the morning anymore with crippling anxiety. So it took years to find what my body needed. And thank gosh, I found it. Um, Oh, Donna, I'm so glad the videos motivate you. I'm so glad. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back through in your comments and see what you're saying. I'm, I'm seeing our Facebook friends on here. Okay, so Josie says, how can you cook? Uh, how can you cook for one person? That's where I struggle. Okay, so... Basically, you're going to have to take the recipe and half it or quarter it, right? Um, but what I would do is take a recipe and make it into smaller portions and freeze them. Um, there's so many great containers. Uh, I've shared them over my channel, like the bento containers that you can put those meals in. And so that way you could just take them out and just reheat them. Um, because it's I, I, it's hard to cook for a family. Sometimes you get sick of cooking. I can only imagine just the one, like where you're like, I don't want to cook every night. Have like a set cooking day and take like two meals and portion them out in fourths and then put them in your freezer. That's what I would do. And that way you're not having to cook all the time. In fact, the um, like the aluminum pans, uh, the bread pans, is a great portion for freezer meals for one person, even, even two people. Um, let's see. It's just me. I always have a few TV dinners just in case I can't cook. Yeah. Uh, I bought a pizza, a Kirkland Costco pizza last night, like the box kind, uh, to have as a backup. I always try to find like one of something like that just in case I I need a quick, quick backup tonight for dinner. Um, we had Sloppy Joe's that was quick to put together for the family before the live. And so, uh, yeah, that was a very quick one. Um, oh, Josie says they have a slow cooker that you can use on your phone. My brother has one, I think, but there is one out there. So you can get, so if you can't get home in time, you can use the app to put it on warming. Ooh, Mr. Toodles, will you do some research on that? That is awesome. Um, so if you need help, like with your schedules and things, Take a piece of paper, map out your priorities, map out and maybe time blocking is going to work for you right now. It's working for me. And like I said, I have a love hate relationship with it. But if I don't do it, I could get caught up in the busy work, all the little busy, busy, busy work. Um, 
that's why I love planners. I've always loved planners, always. So when I designed this planner to fit my brain, um, I thought, oh, but will, but will, you know, the public, will you like this style? And I got to say, I love when you guys write into the website and you leave your, your comments in how it's helping you. And I love the response that we're getting. I'm loving the response and I'm not restructuring the planners. This is it. The daily is the daily and the weekly is the weekly. Um, it guides you, but doesn't tell you what to do. It all it does is guide. I can't, I don't like planners that kind of tell me what to do in a way. Um, so if you want to give it a try, the link, Derek will leave the link for you. Um, try it out. See, you could grab the, just a semester planner. See if it works for you. But let me know in the comments. Um, Lee, what number did we leave off on? Leave the number six if you are a planner like paper planner, like paper to-dos, any of that, and leave a seven if you're electronic. I tried the electronic way. I, I, I just can't do it. I have to write it. So I have to write it. Um, so let me leave here. So you could check those out on the website uh, at she's in her apron com. Okay. Uh, but I love hearing your response. If you haven't left a review, if you have the planners and you haven't left a review, will you please leave a review and be careful how you do it because so many people are leaving like awesome, like love this planner, like good reviews, but they're not starring it. So it sits on one star. No, that doesn't help us. So make sure you hit the right star. If you're loving it, hit the five or the four. You know what I mean? So be careful when you go to leave a review because we're like, oh man, that sucks. <laughs> So I love the response that we're getting with the planner. So go check them out. Um, yeah, I know you'll love it. So remember, when it comes to your sanity, not every piece of the pie can or should be even. In this stage, you could take your life by semesters if you wanted to. Where are you going to have more priority at the moment versus others? Okay, uh, I learned in 2023 that my mental health high had to be bigger. And let me tell you, it was a struggle. It, back and forth, back and forth struggle, back and forth struggle of, you know, taking on and what I was healing from. And I had to take a look at like, what used to light the fire under me is different now. And I had to figure out what is that fire look like now where it, it, it switched, um, just through healing. And so I had to go, okay, well, what's my new fire? What's going to drive me? Because what drove me before isn't driving me because it's healed. Does that make sense? I know that's vague, but it's the only way I could say it. So, um, but you know, as a mom, we wear many hats. We have lots of aprons. And I just, every day is a new day. And every day you just try. Put one little thing into your routine or schedule. See if it works. Learn to say no. Learn to put boundaries up. Make a not-to-do list. And see how you want your workflow to go. What are What is truly busy work and what is actually productive work that's going to move you forward and get to you know to where you want to be into your goal okay i love reading your comments this is so great um we'll take five minutes and uh i'll go through your comments if you have any questions go ahead and leave them i'm going to scroll all the way back up here guys i know i missed a lot i look 35 you're sweet I'll take that. Holy cow. Yes, Melissa. Yes. Yep. 
Um, oh, she says, I have a burnout board on Pinterest and how to rest. It's so important, you guys. I could get so caught up in the go of things. I get burnt out. Um, yes. Okay. Sarah says, I'm trying to help my special needs child to become more independent. I've had to tell myself that these times are more important than other times. Yes. Yes. I, I understand that. Oh, <laughs> Celeste says, it's hard for me to hand off things because they don't get it done or done correctly. Then I have to redo. I have to, I have let me, what? I have let me grown adult daughters start taking over the holiday cooking. Yeah, there's things you could let go of. Like, yes, during the holidays, pass it on to them. Let them carry the torch. Exactly. And what I've learned um, with editors and it's like, but they won't do it like I do it. Uh, but what I get back from them, I'm like, I wouldn't, that was awesome. I, I wouldn't have thought to do that. Seeing their, you know, way of doing it, you guide them, you direct them, but let them go and you could do a little tweak, but don't micromanage. I have, I have gotten some beautiful videos from my editors and I appreciate them. And it was like, I liked that approach. Oh my goodness. You might fall in love with something a different way. Learn to let it go. Do not micromanage. And you may not think you're a perfectionist, but a lot of us are. If you're not moving forward, with a project or let's use me as an example with the cookbook. I'm being too much a perfectionist with it. You know, there's, I need to make more progress and then we'll worry about it on the rough edit, right? But being a perfectionist will stop you from doing anything and moving forward with any goal that you have. So I hope this encouraged you, but in your schedule, um, think too, like I said in the beginning, where does your energy fall? Maybe you have to rearrange your schedule that when you have the most energy, that's where you're putting it into the things that actually matter, that you'll actually get things done. This, I, I, I decided to do this one day years ago, and then I read somewhere where this was a suggestion. I'm like, all right, I'm not crazy. Because I thought, well, am I being a procrastinist by doing this? Like, but this is, you know, where is your energy fall? Okay. For me, I have to start dinner honestly at 4 p.m. Because I start crashing, especially depending on when I took my ADHD med. Because that crash is sometimes when you come down, like, it's fine. But there's sometimes where it's like, done. I'm done. I'm falling asleep. So where is your energy most of the time that you can actually get the important things done? And then later you could do the other things that are busy work. My ADHD makes my life hell sometimes, but it's also my superpowers. Yep. Yep. I, it's truly a superpower and I'm, I am thankful for it. Because I don't think I would have gotten far with she's in her apron without my ADHD. Um, I have friends who do YouTube. They're like, man, you ever just don't know what to film on or run out of content? I'm like, no, actually, no. I can have content to run on for 50 years. It's just getting the steps to get it done. Like, no. I come up with ideas constantly. Constantly. And I can see things in patterns that other people can't see. And I I have recognized patterns that I kind of, kind of spooky. I kind of know when things are going to happen. So it is truly a superpower. And I'm thankful for it, but it's just learning how to manage it. So, but I am very thankful. 
uh, three very recently retired, a widow of four years. Oh, I'm so sorry, hun. I also have a grown son living in the home who has emotional challenges and anxiety issues. It wears me out sometimes. I escape to my room. Yeah, you need to unplug. You need to have a moment um, and you need you time. Like schedule something outside the home sometime when you can. It is so important for us moms to have a moment. Like in Monday's vlog, I talked about sitting in the car sometimes before I go into the house. It's, I need a moment. So don't feel guilty when you need a moment. We take on a lot, especially when we have children that have circumstances that are hard or they are a lot to handle or, um, or you walk on eggshells. Um, I get it. I get it. We need our moments. So, all right. I love the support. Christy says, praying for you, Mary. I love that. You guys are awesome. All right. We can continue this conversation in the comments. Uh, I'm going to keep reading them after this live. What are you doing to help you with your work-life balance this year that you're going to try to switch up? What are you going to kick to the curb? And what are you going to add in? Okay, I want to know in the comments. Thank you so, so, so much for joining me today, you guys. Appreciate you so much. And uh, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Happy New Year, you guys. Oh my gosh, I didn't even say that. Happy New Year. Bye. Mwah.